Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allie, if you're new to my channel, and welcome to Beauty with a Purpose. So this is going to cast a weird shadow. Anyways, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with a Jesus chat for you guys. And this one's going to be about, are you ready to be a wife? Now, I've done plenty of videos where I've gone over the uh, over Titus 2, which pretty much breaks down on how to be a godly woman because you can't be a godly wife without first becoming a godly woman. I mean, I've done plenty of videos going over the Proverbs 31 woman who is a mother, who is a wife. You know, she, she just, she just is the thing. She's, she's just, she's just it. She's like the woman I wish I could be, that I strive to be, that I try to be. You know, she makes her husband look good. She makes her kids look good. Her kid, she makes her kids look so good that her kids call her blessed. And so, that's just where I'm at is like I want to ask you guys because I always hear people or hear girls saying like you know you and Brian are goals I'm so ready to be a wife like I guess I make it look easy sometimes and it is not easy by any means and before I even became a wife it took a lot of sowing sowing the seeds that were necessary to become a wife so babysitting for someone who might need a date night um learning how to cook, learning how to keep up with your home, um, learning to be happy for those who were getting married before me and genuinely being happy, not, oh, well, that's nice, my day is coming, or just like, oh, I'll be happy for them, so my day can come. No, you want, you need to genuinely be happy for these people. Um, I just want to, and I, this video has just been on my heart for a while because there's so much that goes into being a wife and it's not always easy it's not always fun it's not always date nights it's not always playing around with your husband um being a wife is hard being a wife is the job that nobody notices until it's not done so there can be a day where i spend my entire day cleaning this house making sure the vacuum lines on the carpet are just right making sure the dishes the sink is empty of dishes sometimes even making sure i have a crock pot meal going and my husband can walk in and smell dinner and it sometimes will go unnoticed not saying that he doesn't appreciate it but you do a lot of work as a wife that goes unnoticed and you can't get discouraged within that because being a wife is not all about you as a matter of fact being a wife is all about being your husband's help me. So I do all these things that go unnoticed to help my husband. It's all about being his help me. Back in Genesis, that's what God said. I will re I will create him a help me. Um, we are bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. We came out of his rib, um, which means no, he's not to walk all over us. He's not beating us down over the head. Um, but at the same time, in a sense, we're not equal to our husband, we're to help him. So that also means being a wife means you don't get to have all of the control as when you're a single woman. Um, I think one thing that's awesome about my story is, is that I actually ended up living with my dad before I met Brian and I had lived with him for about two years. And so he was really, really sick. And so I had to learn how to take care of him. And then I had to learn, um, keeping up with the house because everybody worked crazy hours and so did I but I wasn't being charged to live there so I felt this is my one and only way that I could help and you know cooking meals for everyone when I was able to and you know I learned a lot of wifely characteristics about that and if we could just get back to the bible um a lot of women weren't even allowed to leave the home until they were married off now I'm not saying you can't live by yourself what I'm saying is I strongly agree that you shouldn't live together until you get married and I know it's all about you need to learn how that person is you need to do this you need to do that but if it's who God has called you to be with then you don't have to worry about am I gonna like the way this person is this does this person clean the way I clean well you are going to be keeper of the home now I'm not saying Brian doesn't help me because if I ask him he will but you ultimately, your job as a wife is to be keeper of the home. Now, what does that entail? That entails, that includes you keeping spirits out of your home, being very, very guarded of who you let into your home, what you allow on the TV, what you, what music you allow to be played in your home, what you allow your children to play with, watch and everything, as well as keeping it clean, cleanliness, 
um, uncleanliness is actually a work of the flesh. When there's no order in a home, the enemy can run in and have his way in anything. That's why there's always order and there's order in cleanliness. There's order in organization. And so you have to keep up with the home. Um, the Proverbs 31 woman, it says she, she arises before everybody to make sure that they have food for the day. I do my grocery shopping at 6 a.m. So yeah, I'm rising before everybody to make sure that we have food for the week. Um, well, until we get paid, until it's time for our next grocery trip, which is usually two weeks. So I grocery shop for two weeks. And, um, you know, I get up, um, before Brian and I cook him breakfast and, I make sure that Ethan's eating breakfast before I even take him to school because I know my kid, I know he's picky. So, you know, it's making sure that you are concerned about winter while it's still summer. You're making sure that your family is set for winter while it's still summer. And when the winter comes, you're making sure your family is ready for summer. Um, it's a lot. Wives are not unimportant. Wives are not just there to look pretty. Wives are not there just to have a big rock on their finger. Um, Brian and I actually don't even wear rings. We don't really even believe in rings. Um, so wives are so much more than a, being a trophy wife. Now think about what a trophy does. I don't want to be a trophy wife. I don't want to just be something to look at. Um, your beauty is fleeting. The Bible tells us that over and over. So if all you have to offer is your looks and you're like, this is going to get me my husband. This is going to keep my husband. Well, what are you going to do when those looks fade away? What are you going to do when you no longer have that 18 year old to 25 year old body? What are you going to do after you have kids and that body is taken away from you? You have to have more to offer than just your looks and your body. And another thing is let's um, now let's tackle um, the order of the home. The order of the home is god your husband and then you your children don't really have a say so in this because your god your husband is wearing god's is putting on christ's head and so that means every decision that your husband makes he's praying and he is trying to have the mind he is making it a goal to have the mind of christ whenever he comes to you with suggestions and you are to wear your husband's head which means you are thinking as your husband which if your husband is wearing Christ's head, then that means that you two should be on the same accord. You two should be one. You two should have that God-centered relationship. Um, but you don't have a headship over your husband. Um, I recently made a video when a lot of people were like, pretty much like, I didn't have any order or this and that. Well, my husband, I consulted my husband before I made that video. I consult my husband before I make every video. I He's usually in the room, not today. Um, if it has stuff to do with like being a wife and a woman, he doesn't really want to hear about it. But if it's like about the Bible or something that I was going through that I want to talk about, he will sit in the room and he will listen to me talk. And if I say something wrong, he will cut me off. My husband even has that much authority over that because he always wants to make sure that I'm in line with God. And us being women, I say it all the time, we're very emotional. It's very hard for us to keep the mind of Christ when a woman is so hormonal, so emotional, um, and we can't think straight. That's why God made us completely different. Yes, a man has hormones, but he's not hormone emotional driven a man sees sees things 3d he sees the whole bigger picture women sometimes just think in the moment because of what they feel in the moment sorry king was about to crawl off the bed and so yeah um that's why man is head of the household because he doesn't go based off of his emotions doesn't mean your husband should be emotionless but every decision he should make, he should make with Christ. And since he's doing that, it should be no problem for you wearing his head and understanding that you are to be submissive to him. Which takes me to my next point, submissiveness. If you can't be submissive to God in your single walk, there's no way that you're going to be able to be submissive to your husband and continue to serve God in your married walk what what will end up happening is all you're concerned about is serving your husband serving your husband serving your husband and yes we're to serve our husbands as unto the lord but that doesn't mean that we don't build our relationship with god and you can't then say well i'm serving my husband so that's building my relationship with god no are you still taking the time to read your bible pray worship 
praise and not only at church but in your alone time are you still taking that time to get filled up because what can easily happen is that we're pouring out and pouring out and pouring out to our husband that eventually we're going to get tired of our husband. We're going to want to stop serving our husband. Why? Because we're not continuing to fill ourselves up. We're not continuing to be renewed as the word says. So you have to remember that if you, you have to learn to be submissive to Christ and be married to Christ before he sends you your earthly godly husband. And yeah, so there's so much that goes into being a wife. I don't ever want to paint a pretty perfect picture. I don't want to tell you when you're married, you're not going to be hurt because that's not true. Um, you two will hurt each other without even intending to hurt each other because you're still learning each other. Um, and I think that's what's wrong with dating for so long. Brian and I were friends from March until June of 20, of July of 2016. So from, March, April, May, June, July. So we were friends for four months. We dated, August, September, October. We dated for three months. So that's seven months. And then we got married. Um, it's okay to put people in the friend zone. It's okay to do that. And if the man doesn't understand that, then that's not the husband for you. You have to learn to have a friendship before you can have a marriage. Because if you're just looking for a marriage, well, where does that, once again, you're not going to have anything in common. It's going to be very hard for the two of you to become one. Um, I'm very happy that I took the time to be friends and learn. And I'm very happy that God put the, put me in the situation that I was in of learning how to serve my dad, not in a husband way, but learning how to be a wife within taking care of a man, within learning how to cook meals, within learning how to keep up with the home. Because without any of that, I don't know if I would be the wife I am today. It kind of prepped me. And so I just want to ask you guys, like, what seeds are you sowing? Are you learning how to cook? Maybe you don't know how to cook. Get a cookbook. Just start trying recipes. Cook for your friends. Um, are you, uh, you know, just trying to be around other married couples and seeing what it's about and trying to get advice? Not just being in a married couple to only see the bad and see what goes on in a marriage, but to also see the good and see where you can learn and grow. And, you know, just pick like pinpoint things that you can take away from other people's marriages. Um, maybe try babysitting for a married couple um, and, you know, like get the get the feel of what it's like to be around kids, to babysit kids, to put kids to bed and things like that, because that come being a mother sometimes comes with being a wife maybe you're somebody who doesn't want kids and that's fine if that's not you then this part doesn't pertain to you but what seeds are you sowing into becoming a wife what are you doing to prepare yourself to become a wife you can pray all day and to be a wife for God to bring you your husband but what if you're not ready sometimes our husbands haven't come to us because we're not ready to be wives and so I just wanted to encourage you guys with that. This isn't to bash anybody, but more to prepare you and hopefully just help you take a step back and look at some ways that you can improve or look at some ways where you can step up in sowing those seeds that way you can reap the harvest of your husband and you know, things like that. And so just ask yourself that question, like, am I truly ready to be a wife? I recommend reading Titus 2 to see the woman's role and then Proverbs 31 to see the role of a wife and mother. And Oh, excuse me. So I love you guys, but always remember that Jesus loves you more, and I will see you guys in the next video. Mwah.